Welcome back to Hudson Appliance to another episode of Wicked Good Food. I'm Matt Williams, and I'm going to be your host today as we cook some things that I recently made for a birthday party. So, my wife is wicked old, alright? So hopefully she won't watch this episode. But I give her a hard time because she's like 10 months older than me, so most of the year she's actually, you know, one year older than me as far as time. So she is going to not mind too much that I say it, but she's about to turn 40. And I wanted to surprise her. So I actually threw her a surprise 40th birthday party almost three months before her birthday. Her birthday is December 18th, so make sure you send her a card or a nice little email. But uh, I wanted to surprise her. I wanted to do some time out with Still Nice Out. So we had 50 or so people come over to her sister's house, and it was a big surprise, and it was all food that she loves. So I'm going to recreate some of the different things that we made for her today, uh, or some of the things we made for her that day, today. We are going to make chicken wings. One of our all-time favorites is chicken wings. We're going to use these wings here. We're going to make a honey barbecue chicken wing, a teriyaki, as well as a garlic parmesan chicken wing. I've got some ribs. We're going to do a way to do our ribs in the oven. And we are also going to make some deep fried bacon, which is a very easy thing to make, but that'll make everybody here happy. And some deep fried raviolis. So we're going to start out with these chicken wings. And I'm going to make a really quick brine. What I did was I took some water, and I have some relatively warm water here. Not hot, but just warm enough that my uh, salt will dissolve. And I'm going to add some salt to it, hopefully. Here we go. Exactly that much. I usually will do about a cup of salt for a gallon of water. And I'm going to just mix it around so it's pretty much dissolved. And you can add all sorts of different things to the brine. Like I said, I'm going to try to recreate what I made for her. So I just did a very simple brine, just with salt, literally salt. And I'm going to pour it over these chicken wings here. And what that's going to do is it's going to force some salt into the chicken because it's always looking for that equilibrium. If you remember from high school and middle school that osmosis, the salt is always going to try to find that equilibrium. So that highest concentration on the outside of the chicken is going to get sucked into the inside. When it does that, it's going to pull the salt in, but it's also going to pull in some water, which is going to help make our wings a little juicier and a little more forgiving if we happen to overcook them. So we're going to use this for two of our flavors of wings. For our third flavor, we're going to do teriyaki. So instead of making a saltwater brine, we're just going to use straight up soy sauce. Now, if I were going to be marinating, marinating this or brining this overnight, I would add about half water, half soy sauce. This is going to be relatively quick, so I'm just going to let it sit here. All right, these are done. These are going to sit for a couple hours. I have some that I started before that I'll pull out when we're ready. Now the next thing that I want to start is our ribs. So here I have baby back ribs. I didn't do baby back ribs that night, but I did do a pork rib with just a little different style. So these are beautiful, nice and meaty. One thing you always want to do when you're working with ribs is there is a membrane on the back of the rib. And you want to pull this off. And you can start it with your knife, but just get your hand underneath and pull it off. You know when you go to a place that doesn't do this, because you'll be eating your ribs and you'll actually get a little piece of this membrane stuck in your teeth as you go along. Now, for Jane's party, what we did was everything ended up being cooked and reheated on the grill. So, I had these already cut into small pieces before I even cooked them, so I'm going to take these and just cut them into little three rib sections. Some of the real big ones I'm going to do into two ribs. Just cut right through. So I'm running into the bone, so I don't want to, it's easier to cut around the bone than through a bone. There we go. And I'm going to put these into this pan here. Now all I season them with is actually one of my favorite rubs that I use a lot. Especially if I'm going to smoke things, and I didn't smoke these ribs, but this is brown sugar, and that's Old Bay seasoning. That's it. It's like two or three parts Old Bay, and no, excuse me, two or three parts brown sugar to one part of the bag. I'm just going to mix that relatively well. Let's get it on here and just kind of rub them around. So this is a dry rub that's going on here. Now, like I said, I knew I was 
going to be cooking in semi-unfamiliar circumstances. So I knew I was going to have a charcoal grill, a big charcoal grill. But I wanted to make sure my ribs were tender. So I cooked them beforehand in the oven. So all I had to do was reheat. I actually did the same thing with the wings, which is what we're going to do. So now that these are rubbed pretty well, I'm going to take and wrap this whole pan in plastic wrap, then wrap it in foil, and then bake it. The reason I'm going to wrap it in plastic wrap is because the plastic is going to actually help to hold in whatever moisture is in our ribs, so it doesn't come up in case the foil gets a hole in it or anything like that. And the foil is actually going to protect our plastic wrap. Believe it or not, you can put plastic wrap in the oven, especially if you protect it, up to 350 degrees or so. Um, just be careful when you take it off because it will be a little bit melty. But I'm going to wash my hands, get this wrapped up, get it in the oven. When we come back, we'll start to get our sauces ready for our wings. All right, so I cleaned up a little bit, got my hands clean. So I drained our pre brined wings. Here they are. You can see there's some that have the just teriyaki sauce brine, or excuse me, uh, soy sauce brine, and some that are just that salt water brine. I'm going to go ahead and pop these in the oven. So like I said, for the sake of time, in the sake of the unknowns of what was going to happen, the weather was a little bit iffy, but the weather ended up being awesome that day, but the forecast was a little iffy. I wanted to make sure everything was fully cooked, so all I had to do was reheat stuff, or even I could just have a buddy reheat stuff. So we're going to make three wing sauces, and I purposely made them very simple, and I'm just going to recreate them here for you. First one is going to be our garlic parmesan. So garlic always has this little kind of woody end on it, so I like to just snip that off on my cloves. And so this is a pretty simple sauce, and I've had similar sauces before, but I've never had this quite on wings. And there's this place we love to go at Diana's, this wing place. My wife loves their garlic parmesan wings. So I said, well, I'm going to recreate those. And so I did. And so I came up with this, which is actually essentially just garlic butter with parmesan cheese in it, and you toss it on your wings. So what I'm doing here is I'm gently giving this garlic a little tap, because what I'm trying to do is just split the skin so that the garlic pops right up. If you take and smash your garlic really hard, what will happen is you'll smush all that garlic. And garlic, believe it or not, has a lot of sugar in it, and that sugar is going to stick to the skin. But by just giving it the old tap, 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 a roux here, we can get it to pop up. Now, I'm going to take and give it a good whack. Wanting to start to smash it. Now, I'm not worried that my garlic is super fine because I'm going to take some time and I'm going to let it cook in butter because I want the butter to be flavored by the garlic and I want the garlic itself to mellow a bit. So I'm going to run through a couple of things, give it a quick rough chop, but I will show you a kind of cool little technique. So there's nothing that you can cook that has garlic in it that doesn't have salt in it. One of the things I like to do is take the salt and I'll actually salt my garlic and now, these crystals of garlic are actually going to work as an abrasive, like sandpaper. So if I take my knife, and I'm going to use the edge of my knife and just grab a little bit of garlic, a little bit at a time, and you can mash it into a nice little paste. So if you want your garlic to be really fine, go ahead and mash it. I don't want it to be really fine, so I'm going to beat it up a little bit and call it there. But that's a good amount of garlic. That's all going in one stick of butter. And like I said, I'm just going to let that cook slowly. I'm not looking for it to brown. I'm not looking for it to come to a full boil. I just want to infuse the flavor of the garlic and give it of some of the intensity of the garlic. Now, the second super quick sauce we're going to make is our teriyaki sauce. So I'm going to take this, which is hoisin sauce. It's kind of like a Chinese barbecue sauce. It's great. I'm going to pour it into a pan. But like so, it's very sweet. It's pretty salty. It's got some acidity to it. And then I'm going to add a little bit of soy sauce to it. So once again, this is not very sweet, but it's very salty and it has a good amount of acidity. I'm going to let these cook. I really like the way the hoisin sauce is after you let it cook for a while. This is an incredibly quick, easy kind of teriyaki sauce, teriyaki sort of flavors. 
that I want it to be relatively thick. So when we put really hot wings in there, it's going to be thick enough that it doesn't just fall right off the wings. The last sauce we're going to make is the easiest one to go. Honey barbecue. Literally, I'm going to take some good barbecue sauce, which is a barbecue sauce that I bought from my school that our students make. We make it fresh. I'm going to mix it with some honey. These sauces are sauces you can make the day or two days or even you know five or six days ahead. You can just take them up and toss them with the wings when you're done, which is what we're going to do. The only one you really need to heat up well, you want them all to be kind of room temperature so they don't, don't cool down your wings, but you want to make sure you heat up this garlic parmesan one because it's butter, so it's going to turn salt. So I'm going to clean this stuff up. We'll let these two sauces cook a little bit. We're going to come back and I'm going to Remind me how to make a standard breading station, or we're going to go ahead and fry our ravioli. Alright, welcome back. So, I gave our garlic butter a little while to cook. The garlic's nice and soft, the butter's flavored really well with the garlic. We're not going to add the parmesan yet, we'll add that right as we add it to the wings, because we don't want it to melt in the sauce. Whatever melting there is, we want it to actually stick to the wings. So, what I have here is the beginnings of a breading station. So, what I'm going to do is take this flour, this regular all-purpose flour, and I'm going to season it with salt. And you want to be pretty liberal with the salt. That might seem like it was an incredible amount of salt that I just put in there. But think about the incredibly thin layer of flour that's going to go onto the stuff we're going to bread. Same thing with the pepper. Pretty good amount of pepper. Just want to combine this. And it might seem weird, but you want to taste it. Taste your flour. I taste salt, I taste pepper, but that's what I want. It doesn't taste that good. It's floury. But now I know that that's seasoned appropriately. Now here I have two eggs, I'm just going to beat them up. I'm going to say that people make a lot with eggs is that they don't beat them enough. I'm going to stuff like an egg wash, but if you don't give it a good hundred or so stirs, sometimes more, you're going to end up, and you can see them in there, you can see little bits of white that have totally kind of dissolved into the rest or mixed up with the rest of the egg. That looks great. So now I'm going to add a little bit of milk to this. You don't have to use milk. You can water, you can just water, you can just drain. And what we're looking to do is to thin out the egg a little bit. And then the last thing I have are breadcrumbs. So the way this works, this, they call this the standard bread procedure. It's one of the first things I learned when I went to culinary school. Is you take something that has a little bit of moisture to it, which our raviolis do. So these are frozen raviolis. They're not made by hand or anything. At least not by my hands. In. You take them and you put them into something dry. So I'm going to coat it really well into something dry with flour. And then they go into something wet, which is our egg wash. So what's going to happen here is this flour is going to stick to the ravioli. This egg is going to stick to the flour. Now I'm going to take our ravioli up and put it into our breadcrumbs. Now the flour, I mean, excuse me, the breadcrumbs, are going to stick to the egg. And what happens is when we go to cook this, the egg actually cooks. And think about making an egg at home, it goes from a liquid to a solid. So as the protein's in there correctly, it's going to make this bread egg stick. So I think our oil is warm enough. I'm going to drop one in here to see. That could be a little warmer. It's okay. I'm going to turn it a little higher. But that's what we're going to do. Standard breading procedure. So. We're going to go into the dry, and then into the wet. So we're going to do our egg wash. So I'm going to do, I'll do five. Just so I think I can do that pretty easily. And you'll notice I'm not using two hands at the same time, because my goal here is to not bread my fingers. So I'm going to have a wet hand, which is this one, and a dry hand. So by having this wet hand and this dry hand, I'm not going to end up 
right my fingers, like I just said. Take some of the breadcrumbs and put them on top. These guys in there. It's hilarious. I'll see you know students at school who don't quite grasp this concept, and they'll be working on something, and all their fingers will literally like triple in size. They can't even move their fingers closer together than that, which is very funny because they keep literally going here, 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 and spread the whole thing. So what we're looking for here is oil that's about 350 degrees or so. Candy thermometer is a great way you can attack it right to the side. You'll notice that I have a really tall pot, which it doesn't make it super easy for you guys to see inside, but it's only filled about a third, maybe a little more than a third of the way with oil. The goal here is safety. As we add something to this fryer, essentially, it's going to start to spit, especially if there's any sort of moisture in it. I'm going to add and so what I want to do is I'm doing something called floating. I'm not throwing these in like I'm taking a little jump shot. I don't have a basket. If you have a fryer at home, by all means use your fryer. It will work great. I'm actually dropping it into the oil just a bit and then letting go. You don't want to drop it from way up here because it's going to splash back. Don't be afraid of the oil. Don't put your fingers in there and you'll be fine. Let's make a little bubble in the noise. I'm going to take a quick two second break while I wash my hands. Alright, so I've got my hands clean. Our raviolis are cooking here. They're just about done. One of the indicators that you can kind of use as a guide when you're frying stuff is when stuff floats. is oftentimes an indicator that's just about done. I'm going to pull these out and check it out. Beautiful, beautiful fried raviolis. Nice golden brown color. I'm not really concerned if these are fully cooked because they're, they already all are fully cooked. Cheese wrapping. I want to make sure they're hot inside, but I have no doubt that they're going to be nice and hot inside. So I'm going to put them right out and put them on some paper towel on the drain. An even better way if you have a rack with a pan below it to catch any grease that comes off, just do it just like that. But there's our first six wrapping only out. The people here at Hudson Plants are definitely going to eat more than that. So we're going to take a quick break. I'm going to fry up the rest of these, and then we'll come back and we'll keep. Keep going with our wings and our ribs and our raviolis and one other little thing we're going to make that's one of my wife's favorites. Alright, so I'm just putting in the last batch of ravioli now. You can see next to it, I've got a whole bunch of ravioli. All done, beautiful, beautiful golden brown. So this isn't something you want to do too far in advance. You could do it, you know, if you're having a big party and you want to stay ahead of it, do it half an hour in advance or whatever. Throw them in a warm oven to hold them. We're all done with that. But they're coming out real nice. Beautiful. You know, and you'll know if your oil is too hot because it'll they'll brown faster than you want. And while we were just sitting there, the oil got pretty hot. We'll keep an eye on that. So I wanted to tell you about some of the other things we serve. So we did not serve any vegetables, right? My wife is not a vegetable person, and I have no problem with that whatsoever. Uh, it was a little bit funny when one of our buddies brought a new girl to the party, and she was a vegetarian, and I'm like, uh, I've got fried ravioli, because that was about it. So one of the other things that we're going to make in a minute is deep fried bacon. Since we have a fryer here, one of my favorite ways to cook bacon and a way to cheat kind of in the restaurant. I'm check it out how quickly these ones, these ones brown now. Because the oil is a lot. One of our favorite ways, whenever I have like a DLC, we always pre-cook our bacon and we have it hanging up and the kids will warm it up. But I actually always ask them to micro to not microwave it, to deep fry it because it comes out so crispy. And if you're into bacon, what's the big deal? But you just take bacon, and so what I did was I had the bacon partially cooked. And literally, you just drop it in there. I'm going to take this whole little mound of bacon, drop it right in here. And what this is going to do is it's going to finish cooking. Now, a couple things to think of is that now you're going to have oil that tastes like bacon a little bit. That can be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on what you want. Everybody loves bacon, I know that. But sometimes you don't want, if you're making a nice piece of fried fish or something like that, you're not going to want it to taste like bacon. But this will get it nice and crispy, nice and quickly. So we serve deep fried bacon, we serve tater tots, 
So I don't know if you've had a tater tot that's deep fried in a while. You know, at schools they serve them all baked now, but they are awesome. So we deep fried those in the ravioli and the bacon. We had in one section. We had the ribs, the three different kinds of wings that we're making for you today, and we had another one of my wife's favorites, which is American chop soup. American chop soup is something we've done before. I think it was episode 19. I'll have to go back and look. But that's one of the recipes in my book, and it's taken off my grandmother's recipe. It's such a simple recipe. If you don't remember it, it's just beef that's browned with some onions, and you add a bunch of Campbell's cream and tomato soup to it, and some pasta, and some Parmesan cheese, and you're done. And it's so good. All right, so now, see how we're getting some nice color on our bacon? It's starting to get a little bit crispy. It's just got a few more moments here. So that was kind of all the hot food that was against the back. I mean, if you grill going, it was great. My buddy and I had to give a big shout out to Tim Haplin, who saved the day. I was running around working the fryer, and he's hanging out and grilled almost all the meat all by himself. But then we had a whole dessert section. She is a big sweet tooth. So I was able to borrow a soft serve machine. So it's pretty cool. I mean, how many times you go to a party that's got a soft serve machine? So we had soft serve vanilla ice cream. And I went to a restaurant supply place, and I got a whole case of like six of our favorite candies. Like, not the little Halloween ones, the full size ones. There was just this huge display of candy, and we had a popcorn machine. And that was fun. People just had so much fun, and it was just so much food. And that's obviously you can tell I love food, and I love to share food and talk about food, but it was really cool for people to show up and just kind of eat like jerks. And there was a fair amount to drink as well. So our bacon's nice and crispy. There we go. I'm going to clean up my mess, checking our wings, checking our ribs. We'll start to get ready, and it's almost time to get Arthur up here and see what he thinks of my wife's birthday party. Alright, so, clean up the mess from frying. We're in good shape. Our ravioli are in our warming oven. I'm going to pull those up here. I have this beautiful orange towel here, and I'm just going to take these hot ravioli and just stick them right in. Quick and easy. I put the sauce in there first so we can just kind of lay these all in and around. You know, if you want it, if you're looking to save steps, you can also take this, just like this, put this whole thing in a warming oven. And that's why I pull it up. It doesn't matter if your sauce is hot. Doesn't matter if it's warm. I wouldn't serve it cold just because I don't like serving real hot food with real cold sauce. But there we go. There's one of our items all finished. Now, for Jane's party, I did 40 pounds of wings. This is like four pounds of wings. So, a little smaller scale. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our first sauce, which is our garlic parmesan, which is just our basic garlic parmesan butter. Let me do this so you can see more. So we'll do six, but I think I've six and six. So I'm going to toss these around pretty well in our garlic butter. Then I'm going to take and sprinkle in my cheese. And just toss these around a little well. And that's it. So this is actually going to absorb some of our butter. We're going to plate these right on our plate. Just going to try it on the front. And I like it when they drip some butter. One of the best things is we go back, I can take a little piece of meat off and go back and dip in there. Alright, so garlic parmesan wings. Done. You can take and sprinkle a little bit of parmesan on the top if you want. If you have a real nice fresh parmesan reggio, this is how I would grate a little bit right over the top. So next what we're going to do is we are going to do our honey barbecue. So I'm not worried, I know who I'm feeding, I'm not worried about cross-contamination as far as garlic butter and honey barbecue sauce. So I'm going to use my same tongs because I don't like to make a big mess. You can always put your wings on a pan, pour your sauce over, but it's always better if you can toss it. Same thing here, I'm going to take these, put these right in the middle. They smell great. Alright, beautiful. Knock a little of that off. Last but not 
least. Here's a really quick, really, really simple kind of teriyaki stack. So I'm going to take our wings that these little ones that are a little darker, and put them in the soy sauce brine, pop them right in here. And once again, coat these. And you'll see, let me pull one of these out for you, that our sauce got a little bit thicker. It's not super thin after we put all that soy sauce in there. Because I reduced it a bit, so that it sticks to our nice hot wings. It's over here. Anytime you can get a little height, that's good. So I'm going to try to kind of stack them up a little bit now, standing up. And it's fine if they touch each other. Unless you're one of those people that can't stand them. But there we go. Three quick and easy wings. So I'm going to throw our cream cheese in the microwave. When our cream comes back, we'll put the salsa on top, get our ribs out of the oven, and we'll see what he thinks. until December, but I threw a surprise party in September. So we're going to recreate some of the dishes that we served there. Okay. So what I have here are some ribs. These are some baby back ribs that I'm just pulling out. And you guys can see we got some beautiful color on these. I actually let them get a little bit more color than I would for her party. So for her party, I cooked everything ahead of time, yeah. and then we threw it on a super hot charcoal grill yeah. to get a little blast of color. But since we're not doing that, I got some color on it. So we've got some ribs, made wings. One of our favorite things in the world is wings. Right. We've got a teriyaki, honey barbecue, and a garlic parmesan wing. Another one of our favorites, this is all favorites. Another one of our favorites, deep fried cheese ravioli. Yep. All right, and then this, you know what that is? It's extra thick paper. And it's also deep fried. Deep fried, okay. What do you want to start with first? Well, you know what, let's try some of the ribs. All right. I'm gonna make it a little easier for us to eat, so I'll cut it, cut a little piece off, so we don't make a mess of ourselves, you know? You can take a little piece there if you'd like. Mm. Nice and moist, very, very good. Nice and tender, it's a good amount of time. That ended up being about an hour and a half, a little more than that. Uh, probably could have got another half hour or so, but. Came out real good. What do you think next? Let's try, uh, let's try the uh, Parmesan uh, chicken. All right, go ahead and grab one and grab and go. I'm not going to eat the whole thing yet, but I will eat it. <laughs> that is delicious. Oh. So you get that garlic, but it's not really like a punch in the face garlic because we cooked it in that butter nice and slow. If you want, we can try the other. Wings off camera. Right. I'm gonna make a mess of ourselves. I'm stripping down on my face. That's right. Yeah. Let's try a piece of bacon. Never bad guys. You said this is deep fried. I get it. Oh, that, that's a really good crunch. Yeah. One of my favorite ways to eat bacon. Now, I saved the best for last. Okay. I thought that might have been your plan. Okay. Let's try that. Okay. You want me to cut one? Yeah. Make it a little easier. Uh, exactly. And this is a little Mary, not Mary, marinara sauce made by the kids of Valley Tech. So what do you think? Now that's way 